Hey guys, it's not a mercenary, and today instead of doing a makeup tutorial like I usually do, I am going to be doing a story time. So this is my first story time ever, and if you would like to hear about my first ever illegal tattooing experience, keep on watching. So it was the year 2016, and little not a mercenary was in her sophomore year of high school. My dog had just died, and I was mourning the loss of my dog. I felt like though I sort of took advantage of the situation of me mourning my dog as an excuse to get a tattoo though, and I wanted to. I, I knew that I was 16 though, and I knew that I couldn't get it done legally, but my best friend went to a school who knew people who did tattoos. Now, my best friend had to go to like the bad kid school, but not because he was bad, but because he had to catch up on some like school stuff and hours and all that whatever and so he had a friend named to be honest i totally forgot his name but let's call him zach okay he had a friend named zach and his friend zach did great awesome tattoos but he tattooed illegally so he would tattoo people of any age you know i mean as long as they weren't like 10 or something so he messaged him and he was like hey my friend wants a tattoo her dog just died she designed something what do you think and I did design something, it was a bone and then it said my dog's full name, I know dogs don't really have full names, but when my mom would get mad, she would yell at him and say, Oliver Wyatt, why did you pee on the couch? And yeah, so Oliver Wyatt was his like full name, right? And so I designed it and he was like, yeah, I can totally do that, it'll be $20. And I was like, oh, $20, like awesome, let's do it. So we go to his house. And this is the first time I meet him, okay? I didn't know what he looked like. I didn't know where he lived. I, I didn't even know how old he was. I just knew that he was in my best friend's school. So my first impression of him, he didn't look like he had showered for maybe like a week. His hair was like shaggy dog, man. It was shaggy. And he had tattoos all like up and down his arms and his legs. But the thing was, they were kind of ugly tattoos, like really ugly tattoos. And I guess he had practiced on himself, so that's why they were ugly. So I looked at him and I was getting a little nervous, but I felt like I couldn't back down now because the dude's right there, you know? Well, we, we drove out here, my dog died, I'm sad, I, I want to do this, I want to get a tattoo. So he walks us into his house and it's really dark and it looks like there's some kind of like construction stuff going on in his house and there's cats cats everywhere and i don't remember if it smelled like cat pee but i'm pretty sure it did because i just remember things being really dirty and i was like oh my god really like am i really getting myself into this and so we walk into his room and he sits me down in front of this tv tray i give him my little sketch and he's like oh okay cool cool and at the time, I wanted to be a tattoo artist myself. So I was talking to him like, oh, what kind of needles do you use? What kind of machines do you use? How do you do this? How do you do that? And he was telling me everything. And he was tracing over my design on a notebook paper. Now, when you get a tattoo, if you bring in your own design, they trace your tattoo on tracing paper that's made for that kind of stuff, or they'll put it through a copy machine that'll like copy the image onto this specific paper that you can then separate, put on your skin, put some solution and then it'll make an imprint on your skin so that the tattoo artist knows what lines to follow. But he wasn't using that paper, he was using notebook paper. So I didn't even know this about tattooing, but I knew that that wasn't right. And I was getting kind of like, is this guy for real? But m my best friend had assured me, oh yeah, he's legit, look, here's his Instagram. He showed me his Instagram. It was like a bunch of big, awesome, beautiful tattoos that he apparently had freehanded and stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, if he can freehand those, he can give me a simple little tattoo with words and a dog bone, right? And so he gets out all of his supplies, which looked like a very Dollar General version of an actual like tattoo supply stuff. He had his his machines, he had his needles, everything was sterile and clean. I mean, I didn't get an infection, so thank God. Um, so that was good, but everything was so dirty and everywhere, so I was kind of worried. And then he was like, 
about to start the tattoo and he was telling me, so what's your favorite band? Like, let's listen to your favorite band so that you can relax and that you're not so tense. And I was like, oh, play Empire of the Sun. That's some little like indie hipster electronic band that I really like. I just can't get over them. I love them. And so he puts it on on his TV and he starts like testing out the machine. So you hear it go like you start hearing it. And he dips into his little ink cap and he starts tattooing me. And I'm really scared at this point because I don't know what it's going to feel like. I never had a tattoo before. And so I looked at him and I was like, I trust you. Like, I I'm really scared, but, but I trust you because I really wanted to trust him. And I was just like really scared. And for some reason, I was like, I love you, man. Please don't hurt me. Like, my skin is in your hands, dude. Like, please don't hurt me. And he was like, haha, it's okay. Like, haha. And I was like... Why is he not freaking out? I'm freaking out. But that was just my own anxiety getting the best of me. And so he's tattooing. And if you've ever seen anyone get a tattoo or if you've gotten one yourself, the ink will start like bleeding. You don't just see the line where the ink is being tattooed. You see all this other ink that sort of outpours out of the... It's sort of like excess from the needle. And he wasn't wiping the excess ink away. So, he couldn't see where he was tracing, and neither could I. And I wasn't even knowing about tattooing at this point, but I knew, hey dude, you can't see where you're tattooing. But I didn't tell him. So he kept tattooing, like maybe he wiped once or twice, but he did not wipe away all of the black ink. And there was so much on my wrist, even, I'm getting ahead of myself. And so he's tattooing and it starts getting to like the bone part of my wrist and it starts like hurting a lot and I'm like trying to jam out to the music in the background and whatever. And so he finishes and there is a blob, just like a huge blob of excess ink all over my skin. And we can't even see it. We can't see the real tattoo. He puts some like tattoo aftercare solution on my wrist and it's like, okay, keep this bandage on for like an hour or whatever, and then you can take it off. And he puts a bandage over it. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. Like, aren't we, isn't it supposed to get washed off? But I don't tell him because I'm 16. I don't want to offend this guy. He has tattoo guns. Like, could have messed me up for all I know. I don't know. I, I just didn't want to offend him for some reason. Nowadays that I'm older, I wouldn't have cared. And I would have told him, hey, um, don't you think... Maybe you could wipe that off so that I could see or make up some excuse like that. But no, I didn't say squat. So we're leaving his house and I forgot to pay him and he didn't even ask for the payment. And stupid little Nada said, oh, I forgot to pay you. Here's your $20. I could have left with the $20 in my pocket and he wouldn't even said anything. So I left. I went home. And I was so excited about my brand new tattoo, my very first tattoo, that also my mom didn't know about. And we'll get to that in a second. So I get home and I wash off the tattoo. And of course it's red and it's sort of swollen like all tattoos are after you first get them. And I notice that the bone looks similar to a male private part. Now I don't have any pictures from before I touched up the tattoo myself and it still doesn't even look that good that I touched it up because I did it left-handed but I was just desperate for it to look more like a bone and less like a male private part. My best friend's like, do you like it? Are you sure? Like, do you like your new tattoo? And I didn't want to say that I didn't like it because I went through all this trouble. I paid the money, I saw the guy, I felt the pain, and I wanted to be happy with my new tattoo. So I convinced myself and my best friend, yeah, dude, like, I love it. It's for my dog, it's helping me mourn over his death. It's great, I love it. But deep down, I felt the growing urge of the like, you don't really like it. Why are you lying to yourself? We both know you don't like it. What are you going to do about this? And so came time for me to start healing the wound. Now, I had drawn on myself all of my life. So for my mom to see things on my skin wasn't really out of the ordinary. 
So, with this, she saw it. Yeah, she saw it. It's an invisible place. It's on my wrist. And she said, oh, that's that's cute. What is that? And I was like, oh, it's, it's for Ollie. You know, his name, my dog's name was Ollie. We called him Ollie. And I was like, oh, yeah, it says Oliver Wyatt. I just, I just drew it on. And she was like, oh, that's really cute. To make it more believable at school every day, I would get like a black, really nice ballpoint pen and like trace over it left handed as best as I could so that when I got home, it would look like there was pen ink on my wrist. And for some reason, my mom really believed it. She believed it. What? You know, I think my mom didn't actually believe it. I think she didn't want to believe it. I didn't think she wanted her little 16 year old, little perfect little girl that she raised perfectly to get a tattoo. My whole life, if my mom didn't want to know that it happened to me, she completely ignored it and convinced herself otherwise. For example, I got a hickey one time and she saw it and she said, Oh, did you get a burn on your neck? Is that is that a burn from like a curling iron? And at this point in time, I did not curl my hair. I only straightened my hair because I was very emo. And and I was like, oh yeah, mom. Yeah, it's, it's a burn. <laughs> Silly me, yeah, I burned it with a curling iron. And she was like, oh yeah, uh, just put some put some medicine on it. I don't know what she said, okay? But I know that she believed it. So she believed that my tattoo was pin or whatever to help me mourn the loss of my dog. And so as time went on and my tattoo healed, uh, somehow in my silly little head, I thought that it would heal and look differently. Like I thought it would look better, but it healed and looked worse. So I ended up telling my best friend to message this guy, Zach, for me to try to get my money back. Um, he never gave me my money back. He kind of just was like really unclear about everything. He didn't really want to answer. He didn't really want to work with me. He was just kind of like, you got the tattoo, like you deal with it. You made this decision. So I was like, okay, so now I have this really ugly tattoo on my wrist. Like, cool. I mean, it was kind of cute in like kind of like a grunge way. Like, I'm not upset with it. It's straight. It's fine. Like, it's basically what I wanted, so I guess it's okay. But I tried to ask him like, hey, do you think maybe you can make up for it by giving me another tattoo? Thank God I didn't go through with that because that is extremely dumb. That done and passed, my tattoo healed, and then the next year, 2017, junior year of high school, Little Not a Mercenary is hanging out with her friends in the summertime, and we were hanging out at my sort of southern country like redneck friend's house if i offended anybody by saying redneck i'm sorry i'm from texas so like if you're a redneck like you're proud of it it's not really like a mean thing over here it can be anyway so we're at my southern friend's house and his friend that he also has there has a tattoo gun and he's giving my southern friend a tattoo and I'm still obsessed with the idea of being a tattoo artist. So I'm asking him questions, I'm talking to him, I'm watching him work, and it looks kind of okay what he's doing on my friend. And so I ask him, hey, do you think you could help touch up this dog bone on my wrist? Because it kind of looks like a male private part. And he's like, oh yeah, totally. Like I can totally do that. And so he does it. And then the funniest thing about this is he was like hey do you want to practice like on me and i was like practice on you he was like yeah draw like here i'll draw a stick figure I'll, I'll draw something and then you tattoo it on my calf so i was like oh. so i was like okay i get some practice like i didn't even have a machine or a gun at the time so i was like okay this is such a weird coincidence like let's do it so i tattoo a stick figure on this dude's calf Mind you, it was probably like like this big. Like it took up like a, a good amount of his calf. And I was like, why would you let me do that to you? He was like, oh, you know, it's funny. It's a memory. It's an experience. I was like, dang, bro. Like you really don't care. And then a couple months pass and my tattoo heals. And it looks stupid. It looks even worse. 
part that that guy at my southern friend's house had drawn over faded so bad that you could barely tell what he was trying to do. A couple months later, when I started getting into tattooing, I was still 17, I ordered a kit from Amazon. Like, it was like a pirate face tattooing kit and it came with all the needles, all the machines, all the, it came with the little voltage box that you plug in your machine to. So I started getting into tattooing and one day I had my gun out and I was actually practicing on some practice skin and I was thinking, you know, why don't I just try to fill in my bone? And also, the O in the Oliver was really messed up. It looked more like a backwards C because because Zach had not like filled in the O all the way. So I got my little left hand that I do not draw with. I am not ambidextrous. And I tried my hardest to make that O an O and to make that bone look less like a male private part. I sort of succeeded. It looks a lot better than it used to or than it would have if I would have done nothing to it. And I'm glad I took the chance and did it. But yeah, that was the story of my first tattoo. Now, what I would recommend to you who's watching this, if you are not of age in your state, in my state, I'm pretty sure it's like this in a lot of places, you have to be 18 years old to get a professional clean good tattoo please wait to get a tattoo you guys if you're underage please wait until you're 18 years old because people like me who were tattooing and people like Zach who is tattooing me we have no clue what we're doing no one's teaching us we're going off of YouTube and experience I would definitely recommend if you go to get a tattoo in someone's house and there's cats everywhere and they're using notebook paper to stencil out your tattoo, please leave. Please just take my advice and know that it's not going to be cute little, like a cute little Tumblr tattoo, like, oh, look how cute, no, no. Also in this video, I promised you guys that I would show you all of my tattoos. So now I am going to list some pictures of tattoos that I have on my body. So yeah, this is my very first story time about the first time I got a tattoo. Leave me a comment down below telling me about your first tattoo if you've ever got one or if you want one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like my video so you can share it around the world. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see my content. And don't forget to leave a comment below so I can reply to you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.